It's the Mondrages' first night at the house that they have newly inherited and they are also their first time sleeping alone. No one is happy. It's a new situation for them and I think it was quite lonely. Honestly, I didn't like that quite much. The next morning, Alice Mondrich goes over in her carriage to uh, the modistes and she is getting her the dresses that used to be the former lady kent's dresses altered so um madame delacroix is kind of telling her like listen you need to change your style not just alter these clothes so she's trying to like get her to i guess spend more money or whatever but then alice is like as much as i would like that i am a new face to the town and i would like to show them that even if something new has happened some things still stay the same so she's kind of trying to keep the town calm but then uh, madame delacroix tells her listen i understand what you're saying but the town likes to feed on the nouveau on the new people so when when the the town gets really they get really ill-tempered when they're very hungry so basically she's trying to tell alice like listen you are it's not going to be an easy time for you and you are going to be under scrutiny and criticism possibly so she's given the, her girl the heads up then while they're there, Eloise, Francesca, and Violet are also at the modiste. And you know, Violet is just obsessed about making Francesca the diamond of the season. And she believes that you know, getting her dressed to the nines and all that is going to attract the interest of the queen and is going to make the queen pay attention or notice Francesca so Eloise and Francesca are talking about the queen and they're kind of planning on how to how to like prevent or delay themselves from getting married to which Francesca is like listen I'm happy to get married in fact I just like I want to get it over and done with and live my peaceful life and Eloise is just trying to convince her sister like hey like you know let's try let's try to do something to not get me married as long as possible as i possibly can so francesca gives her the lowdown on the tea that lady danbury and uh, spilled when she came to visit them for tea and then eloise tells the other debutants that the queen is indeed interested in finding a diamond so in doing so she's planning on getting her the attention of the queen away from her and then after that you have this lovely scene of of hyacinth gregory colin and benedict in the garden and they're playing cards and apparently hyacinth has mad skills in cards she's beating the boys and it's just like a fun little time and i love these moments of family that the Bridgertons seem to have like they really enjoy spending time with each other and it's shown by the quality time like little nuggets little pieces that we see and in this moment it's like spending quality time with each other so Colin has arranged for Penelope to come over to the Bridgerton house which was a place that she mentioned previously that she felt comfortable in and clearly she is nervous and she's uh, uncomfortable being in there because she doesn't want to bump into Eloise and she's asking Collins all these sorry Colin all these questions about like oh what if somebody sees me where's Eloise and then Bridget uh, Colin is assuring her that everything is fine they have complete privacy and now they can have a one-on-one -on -one lesson where he can teach her how to flirt properly and then like they go into the drawing room where they're about to begin the lesson and 
the entire time penelope is nervous because we know why and and so colin tries to make it as comfortable he tries to make it as comfortable for her as possible and he's just like okay i'm going to be the person that you're hitting on let's do this because you know me and i know you there won't be all these nerves and yada yada so you know before all that happens she says you know i know i can be clever and amusing but somehow my character gets lost between my heart and my mouth and i find myself saying the wrong thing or nothing at all and he's just like okay give it your best shot right and then she hits him with a line where she's like you have the most remarkable blue eyes that only shine brighter because of your kindness or something along those lines and colin is taken aback and he's like whoa i don't think he expected that and because they're friends it's kind of awkward but at the same time i think he was feeling that like yo this shorty like laid the line on me then after that when that happens they hear Eloise and Francesca talking because they're back from the Modiste sooner than expected. And then Colin advises Penelope to go and hide in the study while he like can figure out a way for her to get away without being seen by Eloise. And in doing so, she goes to the study and then she finds, she's just looking around and kind of touching his things and and she she sees his journal on the table and it's wide open so he had been previously writing and she reads his entries and it's very intimate his writing and she's attracted to i think his writing style and loki i think like penelope is like a sapiophile because all that heavy breathing she was doing while she was reading his thing as scandalous as it was i understand and i get that these women these people were sheltered from matters of intimacy so she's attracted to yes the amorous content in his writing but i think she's also attracted to the fact that he writes so he's articulate in his writing and he's very skilled in his writing so he stumbles upon her and he confronts her about reading the writing which she apologizes for and then while he's trying to gather or close his book as he is scolding her for reading his writing which is supposed to be private he knocks over i think a lamp or something like that and then he ends up cutting himself while he's trying to clean up the mess and then so she tries to help him with the bleeding to stop it and they have this moment where they are holding hands and um you can see it's like they both break away from that because they are kind of crossing that line slowly between friendship and and beyond friendship and it's kind of like a confusing place to be especially because they've been friends for a long time and i think for him not knowing that he could possibly be attracted to penelope whereas penelope knows that she's attracted to him so it's kind of like an interesting position for for both of them because you kind of see like penelope kind of gives him the butterflies penelope makes him nervous but he's not aware of the reason why um then when she leaves i mean he suggests that she should leave and then she does so but not in a in a terrible way but then it's because she had to leave anyways because eloise was back in the house so as she's leaving and running away eloise notices her and then she turns and notices eloise as she's just about to leave and it's not it's not a good moment like eloise is still icing her she cares about her but she's kind of like unprepared to see her in her own home then um alice the next scene alice is getting ready to go to a ball you can see she's not really into it 
and she's just like ah this is just an obligation that i have to go to let me just get dressed and then one of her ladies in waiting who's getting her prepared she's just like don't you want to try anything at all and she's just like no like she's hesitant and then the lady in waiting insists on her just seeing what there is at least check it out and see if you like it or you don't so she opens the drawers and you just see all these different types of like jewels and it's beautiful beautiful necklaces beautiful earrings just beautiful accessories and you can see that lady can't well sh while she might not appreciate her gowns the former lady Kent's gowns she appreciates her taste in jewelry and I was happy for her on that account then Eloise and Colin they are in a carriage going on their way to like a social event probably a ball and they're discussing Penelope and Eloise confronting Colin about having her at the house she encourages him to continue having a friendship with Penelope because Penelope really doesn't have friends and Colin might be the only one actually who is in her corner but then she she says she doesn't want to see her around the house to which he agrees and apologizes for and then she has this moment of weakness I want to say or vulnerability where she does ask about Penelope but she doesn't want to seem like she cares about Penelope and um, she says that the only reason she's asking is because she doesn't want her friend to be suffering or to be despondent to which Colin says no she's not she's good in fact she's trying to ha find a husband and then she's like mm, that sounds unlike Penelope and um, I hope she's not trying to find one in you because you are the most eligible bachelor of the season and it would appear scandalous if you know people found out that she was at the house and colin was like nope i'm only helping her and because of the reasons that you have mentioned it possibly seeming wrong we are not going to tell anybody let's keep it between us and then um I will pause there because I've decided to gather to to put it together in such a way that there's some flow or continuity. So the next point that I had was going to be kind of disjointed if I ended it on that note. So I'm going to leave it here. This is part two. I think I'll just do a third part after this but i will release it at a later date because i have been having some technical issues honestly i've been struggling and it's late right now it's like 2 26 a.m so i don't want to do a bad job and um i want to produce something that i can be proud of so that's why i'm leaving it here thank you so much for watching it i hope you guys are enjoying this and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye.